Bible say about sadness. We live in a time where we do almost everything we can to be the opposite of sad. We will do almost anything to be happy. This is not a new thing. In fact, if you read the uh, American Constitution, it says that it's for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You know, we, we really want this idea that we want to live happy lives. There's nothing wrong with that. But then what do we do with sadness? Because some people are sad a lot. Maybe you're one of those people. Maybe you have good reason to be sad. We're going to be talking about that today. And what the Bible says about it and what we can do about that. Heavenly Father, as, as we look in this area, let us have a very balanced approach to this. I'm sure don't have all the answers. Uh, and this is one of the more difficult emotions of how do we deal with this. There's no easy on or off. I want this as often as I can have it. What can I do? Or I never want to have this, and how can I avoid it? Now, this one's a bit of a challenge. May you give us great wisdom and discernment as we look at this, and may we be able to, to grow more into the measure of Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So just to explain... What is sadness? Sometimes you can just call it like your, your heart's heavy. You're heavy hearted. It's an emotional pain where, you know, if you were to get hit or fall down, you might have a physical pain. This is it's an emotional pain. It's normally connected with things like you feel like you've lost something. Um, you just feel helpless, disappointed. You've been left out. Just sorrowful. It's one of the most basic emotions and it's felt by all people nobody gets a escape button from this one there's no well I've never been sad before of course you have everybody's been sad some people are uh, are rather sad regularly some people are sort of bluesy on a regular basis and I don't mean depressed I just mean they're sort of very you go back to that word heavy hearted some people are sort of heavy-hearted people most of the time. Other people are uh, a lot more on the other end of this. But no matter who you are or where you are on the scale, you're going to be sad sometimes. And, you know, there are some difficulties with sadness. For instance, why does sadness occur? Just to put it into brass tacks, sadness occurs because of the result of the fall of sin coming into the world and, and the difficulties that come at that. There, there was not loss before. There was never going to be, well, you know, my, my dad died. I'm just, I'm sad. I mean, I'm not depressed. I'm just, I'm sad. Or a loss of a job. It just wasn't going to happen. There would have been work. You know, the disappointment of, well, I'd hoped my life would work out this way, and it just didn't. You know, there wasn't going to be that, and that despair, and that hopelessness, kind of an idea that connects in with sadness, that wouldn't have been there. So sadness is either the direct result of sin, or the indirect result of sin. Because there's sin, and hurt, and death, and garbage in the world, we're sad. I mean, just a hurricane comes through and knocks over our beach house. I ain't got one, don't worry. But, you know, I'd be sad if it's ever happened to you. You're sad. I mean, who wouldn't be sad? I mean, even you got insurance. You're, or you're sad. It's not going to make you happy to go through something like that. I mean, you didn't do anything wrong. It's just but because there's sin in the world, hurricanes happen, and difficult things come up, and, and, and homes get destroyed. Or whatever it may be. Or it could just be you sinned. You stole. You got caught. You went to jail, or you had to pay it back, and you're embarrassed, and you're sad. It could be either way, but not always. It, it, is it because someone sinned? Sometimes we're sad just because we live in a messed up world, and bad things happen. Job is a really good example of that. 
because of disasters and because of bad things and because of enemies, he lost his children, he lost his fortune, he lost his respect, he lost all these things, and he was very, very sad. He went through great sorrow, and he didn't do anything. It wasn't by his own fault. It just happened. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes that time and chance occur to all people. We don't like thinking of that as Christians. It sort of seems weird to God's sovereignty and so forth. But he's the one that said it. And it happens to everybody. And we are going to go through those hard times. And sometimes they just make you sad. And one of the weird things about sadness, though, versus, say, fear. When we talked about fear on Tuesday and that spirit of fear, we said we're never supposed to have it. That we're to trust God, have faith, believe in Him, and not walk around in a spirit of fear. This one's a little different. Is sadness an emotion that should be avoided? No. It's an easy answer, no. There's nothing wrong with sadness. It's not a sin. It's not a lack of faith. It's not because you're not strong enough. In fact, in Ecclesiastes 7.2, this same book, Solomon says that it's better to be in the house of mourning than in the house of feasting. You say, well, you know, okay, fine. But Isaiah 53, 3 says that Jesus himself was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. You know, in other words, he's good friends with sadness. He spent a lot of time with sadness. He knows what that's like to, to feel left out, to have loss, to be disappointed, to feel at a disadvantage, to be sorrowful, to have a heavy heart. Jesus understood sadness very well. You say, what are the purposes? Why do I have to be sad? Is it just because I've sinned and God's punishing me? There are three purposes I want to go through for sadness. One is to share in the suffering of Christ. It mentions that in at least a couple passages. For 2 Corinthians 1.5, 1 Peter 4.13, that sadness is our way of sharing in the sufferings of Christ. If you're going to suffer like Christ suffered, you're going to be sad like he was sad. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The loneliness that leads to sadness. Or it's going to be the pain that he went through and the persecutions and the difficulty that leads to sadness. The betrayal of one of his very closest friends throwing him to the wolves and to the enemy and the sadness that came through all those things. You say, I want to share in the sufferings of Christ. I want to know Christ and I want to know the life he lived. It, it won't be easy. Not only to share in the suffering of Christ, but second, to glorify God and help us grow as people. It says that in 1 Peter 1, 6, and 7, that it glorifies God and it makes us stronger as we go through these things and give him the glory anyways. It's easy to praise God when you're up on the mountain and very hard to praise him when you're going through the valley. And number three, sadness teaches us to comfort others going through the same struggles we went through. And you're going to see that in 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 5, that you know through the blessings and comfort that we were given when we went through hard times, we are expected to pay it forward and go through the same kind of an idea of helping someone else that's going through the same struggles we've went through. You say, but what are the practical steps? How do we apply this? What are things I can sort of take home with me so that sadness either helps me or doesn't bother me quite to the same level that it did? One, acknowledge that God will never place on you more than you are able to bear. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. That he will never, ever put on you more than you can bear. You say, I just can't handle this. I can't do it. I'm falling apart. It's impossible. It's just too much. God's already said, it'll never be too much. You can overcome any one of the things that you're going to go through, or I wouldn't let you go through it. So the choice isn't, oh, it's too much, I can't do it. The choice is only this, do I say it's too much and go fail and give myself an excuse, or do I man up and go take care of it and say, you know, this isn't too much. Not because I'm tough, but because he said it never would be. Number two, believe that God is working all things together for your good in Christ. Romans 8, 29. That God is working all things together for the good of those who love him, for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. That God knows how to work even our sadness into making us the person we need to be. And number three, lastly, it teaches us to, you say, how do we work this real well? Romans 12, 12 says, be patient in affliction. When you're going through hard times, when you're going through sadness and grief and you're getting beat up, 
Be patient. Be patient. Do not grow weary in well-doing, for you know in due season you shall reap a harvest of righteousness if you faint not. Don't give up on it. Don't quit right when the light's there and you're just about to turn the corner and it's be done. And then it's just right there in front of you. Don't quit right then. Keep pushing on. Be patient in your affliction. And you say, I want a really good take home for this before we have our prayer and our uh, closing song. And I'll give you one. If you've not seen the movie, the cartoon movie, Inside Out, use your children, your grandchildren, whatever, as an excuse to see it. It's a brilliant movie, and this movie talks about anger, sadness, grief, fear, uh, vanity, and so forth, better than anything you're going to watch, probably. This does a fantastic job of sort of personifying each of these things. I would definitely encourage you to watch the movie Inside Out by Disney, I think. And uh, we watched it. It was a brilliant movie. I think this would really help a lot as you're looking at these emotions. Thank you for joining us. This is uh, the Thursday lesson. We'll close in prayer and our song. Do join us tomorrow for our last day of the week as we look at the joy of the Lord that is our strength and that we can have in Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, for those who are sad now, your Holy Spirit was given a name called the Comforter. I pray for those that are hurting, that are sore, that are going through hard times, that are sad, that your great Comforter will bring them peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My Jesus.